Now, audio is one of those things that everyone kind of puts to the back of the queue, but you should really be giving it more attention than your visuals. What you want to be doing is getting the best audio you can on set when you're there. But sometimes we don't do that and we need to fix it in post. Or there's just mistakes that we will make in post because we're not actually that into audio. So here's five mistakes that you've probably made and how to avoid them. Let's go. Have you ever been listening through your headphones and only one side's coming out and you're like, well, where's the other side? You know, I have two ears. Why aren't I using both of them? That's because you've got your audio channel split to just left or just right. So we want to change that. We want to make sure our audio is coming out of both sides. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on the footage before we drag it into the timeline and hit modify. Once you hit modify, you can go to your audio channels, switch it up depending on which way it's wrong and boom, there you have it. Your audio coming out of both channels. But there's nothing quite as annoying as when you're watching video and you have to keep going down and keep going up because the volume's all over the place. What you want is something nice and consistent throughout your entire video. Now, what we're gonna do is go with the broadcast standard, which is minus 12 dB for audio and minus 24 for music. Give or take, you can use your ears to regulate between that, but a good 12 decibel gap and getting those two levels there gives you plenty of headroom in the audio and plenty of lower room as well. If you're going to about minus six to minus 18, you're all right. But if you're beginning to creep up to minus three and peaking, that's what you want to avoid. If you've only got music, then put that to minus 12. Or, you know, if you've got sound effects and kind of weave that in depending what's going to take priority at that point in time. You've got to use your own judgment and your own common sense. But for the most part, minus 12, minus 24, happy days. If you're spicing up an interview, you're probably going to want to chop and change and make bits start and end wherever you want. You might actually start a sentence talking about London and Paris and you might want to end chips and all sorts. We gotta watch out for those sharp cuts because they're horrible, they sound awful. You have to blend your audio. So you wanna right click on the join, apply your default transition, and then adjust that little parameter so the words aren't overlapping. You wanna try and give yourself a little bit of breathing time if you can, or if you're trying to blend two words together, then you just wanna make sure that that sound is perfectly synced up. You can also just use Control Shift D or Command Shift D, Windows or Mac, and then your default transition is applied just on the audio. Maybe though, you're gonna be interviewing someone and then you're gonna to cut to B-roll, but you haven't got music over that bit, and suddenly there's an awful moment where the sound you start to notice that background noise a lot more because no one wants to hear that background noise, but we don't want to hear it and then it goes and comes back and goes and come back. So this is why we always want to grab room tone. If you know what room tone is, it's just this. You get the idea. If you grab your room tone, then you can put that in and marry up. That way, it's far less distracting for the audience. They'll allow that normal bit of background noise, as long as it's not hissing or too much over the top. So there's a little technique for you, and that's why we always want to grab room tone. The last thing is one that really, really bugs me. Missing the beat on the music. The waveform is there, so just use it. Zoom in, find that large section, that obvious beat, and line it up. It's as simple as that. If you're missing it by like, three frames, you're gonna notice it. One or two, you'll probably get away with it, depending how fast the action is, but don't be lazy. I know it's tempting, think, yeah, that, that's kind of right. But then you realize that you zoomed out to like 400%, whatever. You need to get in there and try and line that up as best you can. And there you have it. Five audio mistakes that you can avoid in post-production. See you tomorrow.